nothing. I've got nothing. There's only one option left, and I really, really don't want to use it. Shortly after the Ratatosk Express failed to emerge from the Bifrost, a small group of bandits arrived to prey on the chaos. Their clothing and weapons were utterly alien, and it took almost 20 years to capture them. Even stranger, in the 60 years of their imprisonment, they have stubbornly refused to age. They have, however, shown an affinity for technology beyond what we know. If anyone still living understands the Bifrost, it'll be them. I hate them. Ah, good morning, Inspector Liff. On Raum. And what can we do for you this fine prison day? Is it about the Bifrost? Uh, yes. How did you know? Given your distaste for us, it is the only foreseeable event with a greater than 30% chance of bringing you here. Has the train arrived? Yes, a few days ago. Ah, then we should be going. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Look, I'm just here because I need to understand what happened in the Bifrost. What happened to the train? Well then, we shall tell you. Like whiskey with the gasoline, we're just so shut, 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 shut up. No singing. I am sick of your singing. Where did you get that violin? Ooh. Just tell me what happened. Well, if you're going to be like that, you can just watch the black box. No, I can't. The data's too corrupt. Oh, is that all? Ivy, give it here. The recordings are clear now. I can see everything. The first that matters, that really matters, is from the locomotive. Thor and Sigyn standing in the engine room, staring towards where the engine should be. But there is no engine. Instead, a man lies upon a silver altar. His name is Kvasir, a low-level member of the Midgardian Resistance, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the dozen tubes and feed lines plugged into his veins, pumping blood through the arcane glyphs and blood channels and gears and sigils that line the chamber. The metal is the same as that which makes the track, and it hums like a far-off chant. Judging by their faces, neither Thor nor Sigyn had any idea what was in this room. After a few moments of paralysis, Sigyn runs to Kvasir, pulling tubes out of him, blood seeping, oozing from his wounds. Thor begins pulling levers and throwing switches seemingly at random, causing the glyphs and channels to move and warp their constellations. Then they stop. It isn't clear whether it was removing Kvasir or Thor meddling with the controls, but both of them can sense that something has changed. Something has gone very, very wrong. 